Hello everybody and good morning. Welcome to the Top Producer Show uh, with me, Jeff, and apparently Bad Kitty this morning. <laughs> but anywho, our mission is to educate, equip, and train servant leaders. Our vision is to create financially independent achievers, and our purpose is to help people grow. And right now, we are starting the book, If You're Not First, You're Last by Grant Cardone. Excited. So... <coughs> I love his books, so this is going to be a good one. And this has been on the list for a while to go through, so this is going to be great. So today we're going to go over the introduction to this book. So the importance of first. Hold on, kind of. The importance of fur. Of fur, yes. <laughs> Tweet and bring everybody oh, on. Oh, yes, I need to invite everybody Hold on, on we're going to invite here. some people here. that back because the cat hit it okay here we go all right so the introduction to this book so unlike systems cultures or cultures where everyone's rewarded for participating and regardless of their efforts <coughs> abilities or even the score the only position that is ultimately makes sense in business and earnings and great rewards is of course first place so if you're not in if you're not in a dominant if position to make in your market, you are risking. So if you're not striving for that first place, you're really not going to get anywhere. So when economists are bound, when economists are bound with a business, the company is first in first position, continues to gain customers, and expands its size, and pre uh, presents while the weaker players eat. AKE out increasingly smaller gains and uh, gains helped along slowly by the rich nature of the market. So, however, when these profitable times uh, times weigh, the dominant uh, company benefits from the first place position and grabs the market share away from all the other uh, competitors. While others, uh, while those competitors are paying the price. So while when everything starts to go downhill, the people who put themselves in that top position put themselves in a position to take advantage of everything else. Which is why you'll see some people, even though the economy is really bad, that they're still doing really well. So the game-changing economy. Business people, salespeople, managers, entrepreneurs, and CEOs fear economic reduction, uh, reductions, which is rightfully so, and nobody likes to go through those times, especially when you're not in a good situation. So when the economy is not doing well, many people start to cut back rather than looking at quality, and they try to find ways to do things the cheapest way possible. So people tend to become dependent on surplus of opportunities, easy credit, cheap money and develop an overall unrealistic attitude when bi uh, when the business is good and the wind is on their backs. However, when the market changes and you're, you have to tighten your belt a little bit, it forces, uh, 
the forces are no longer at your back and they're blowing directly in your face. Because it's easy to do things when everything's working in your favor, but then when things are not working the way that you want them to, it tends to get a little hard and people get frustrated. So every weakness in the organization is greatly magnified when times are tough and mistakes become extremely costly. And so something that may have been a small issue once before now becomes a great issue. So when the economy starts to shift, people immediately find themselves scared, confused, overwhelmed, angry, helpless, and unsure of whether uh, there is anything that they can do. So, and during these times, people begin to realize that their business incomes and future are all at risk, which is much to what happened at the beginning of this pandemic. There was a lot of people who had to pause and they're like, okay, what do we need to do? What are our options here? And there are some people who just sat back and they're like, I'm just going to wait for everybody else to give me the answers. And then there's the other people who went out and see, uh, sought out, okay, what are the options? What can we do? And what is the best way that we need to go about this? So the truth of the matter is, if you're not number one in your category or field, it, you're in a dangerous position. So this book is about how you're going to be able to add... Huh, I don't know what the heck I typed there. This is what happens when you're writing late at night. So this book is about yeah, how to add your... Yeah, your professional mission and goals and and not just to acquire and dominate acquire but how not to just and just acquire but dominate yeah, the competition and the marketplace so regardless of your product service or idea uh, despite the changing economy uh, you could be first and should always strive to be there because if you're not striving to be first, you're really not going to put in enough effort to really get yourself into a position where you're going to, yeah, where you're going to be okay no matter what happens. So you must acquire a position within your yeah, company or career in which you are not susceptible to the economic pullbacks, and start thinking in terms of creating your own financial system. So in this book, we will be learning exact actions to take in order to advance ourselves, our company, and our ideas and always come out on top. So easy times to tough times. So and when economics change from being optimistic and positive, which means companies are still expanding, uh, to very difficult and negative, which is contracting, people respond in various ways, which is funny because some of these are very similar to how people um Ex uh, similar to those what people experience when they lose a loved one and that is denial anger resentment empathy and then finally to recovery but these but those who succeed during major economic contractions find these changes to be inspiring moments that incite new solutions and creativity and it's something that you just have to work on it's not something that people always have like the initial yeah, the initial reaction is always fear and worry of like, okay, like, how is this going to work out for us? Like, we had this at the beginning of the pandemic, too. We had two weeks where we're like, okay, what's going to be going on? Like, how, yeah, what are going to be the regulations? What do we need to follow? How is this all going to work? And how the heck are we going to do some of this stuff from home? But we did all that planning right away and figured out it got the answers of, look, this is what we need to do. Now, this is how we need to do it. And then we were able to lead our team through that. And we're like, okay, this is how we need to do it. And it actually worked out really well because now it's so normal to get on a Zoom call and get online and talk to people over uh, over the computer, talk to people on the phone. I was actually really thankful for it because sometimes there were there was still that group of people that did not want to get on the phone and really talk to people <laughs> so i was actually kind of okay with that because now people it's so normal now where i'm like oh well actually even though we were going through a pandemic it actually made some things a lot easier because i'm like oh cool now i don't have to fight with people to get them on the phone so grant is going to be given exact instructions on how to benefit during economic crisis and expand yeah what you're doing in 
in your company. So we'll be able to take advantage of a you know, weakened economy, see the market, share from less you know, profit competitors and use you know, contracting events to create a financial situation that you want to be in yourself, your company and your family, independent, local, national, or a world economy. So there are advantages to periods of economic contraction once you know how to e exploit those opportunities. So you will grow while your competitors shrink and submit in despair. Now that's his wording. <laughs> but if you don't go in with the mindset that you're going to dominate the position and the market, you're not going to be able to compete with the other people because there's always going to be that other person who has that intense desire and if you don't have that same desire or more, you're not gonna be able to fight for that position. So there are plenty of people who are seeking answers during today's challenging times. However, uh, there's a big difference between those who are looking for answers and those who are willing to actually learn and execute the exact actions to be able to ensure their success. A lot of people just want somebody to tell them, hey, everything's gonna be okay we're going to help you and basically they're looking for somebody who's just going to bail them out because most people have been taught and preconditioned that if something goes wrong or if they don't have enough money that the government's just going to take care of them and unfortunately like everything else ran by the government it doesn't always run that well and if you don't agree with me go to the post office how well do, do things move there not very well so Warnings about this book. <laughs> so most people buy books, uh, buy books that they start but never finish. So Grant believes that the reason for this is, uh, number one, a small financial investment requ uh, required for a book makes it easy for us to buy them by the dozen and read very few. The next is we don't make a commitment to finish by a particular date which is why we liked to do this show because this is what was making us read this was what was keeping us on top of it because I'm guilty of this I'll read four books at the same time and I switch back and forth depending on where I'm at because I keep books in certain places so that way if I have a time where I'm like okay um, rather than looking at Facebook or any other type of social media, I would rather be reading this. So I'm guilty of reading like four books at the same time. And then many books contain a lot of misunderstood words. So people don't understand certain, like don't understand the meaning and they gloss over. So people approach books as though they're only worth the price that they paid for them rather than seeing them for the million dollars worth of information that is inside them. And a book is, it can make you millions of dollars, but only if you read it with an outlook and approach each action as though it's going to make you a million dollars. The information in books is a lot more important than what you're actually paying for them. And people are guilty of this. And I had something and it left me. Never mind. <laughs> but, um, it's very easy to get, oh, I remember what I was going to say. Where there is no, no cost, there is no value. So a lot of free information is misunderstood and people don't see the value in the information, even though it's good information. So sometimes charging more money for information makes the information more valuable. So that's why a lot of books are, uh, get underrated as far as like what you can actually do with the information. But then there's some people Jennifer. who take that information and then they're like, you know what, I could really do something with this and they're the ones who end up taking off. So the average person reads about 200 words per minute. So he or she is not, in, yeah, so long as he or she is not interrupted. So you could actually finish this book in five hours. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Hold on, gotta let this one off of my lap. She's trying to crawl all over me. So many people when reading a book will stop reading if they don't understand words uh, that are being used because of them, uh, it becomes, and because of those words that people don't understand. Some people, if you're going into a new industry and you don't understand the language, a lot of people will put the book down because then it becomes too complicated and it makes them nervous and then they don't want to do it because your basic human instincts wants to keep you where you're comfortable. So you have to push yourself and really figure out what, you know, what 
the information is trying to tell you like I started doing this like every once in a while I'll come across something where I'm like you know what I don't even know what that means so rather than glossing over it and just skipping it and just going on and reading to the next thing actually go look up what that word means so that way you understand the information and that way when you're sitting talking with somebody you're able to have a different conversation on a whole nother level so your success is an idea, an area, is an area depends on the degree to which you understand the terminologies being used in that area. So the information that he is sharing in this book is going to be used throughout three recessions. Yeah, he used throughout three recessions and he always came out on top stronger. Now this book was written in 2010. So this was 10 years ago. A little over at like 11 years ago but he was writing about all this stuff yeah back then and now we're going through it now because the economy always goes up and down and it always likes to repeat itself so he wanted to let everybody know like this is how you need to go through this because he went through one where yeah like anybody who knows Grant's story he went through one economic change where he almost didn't make it and it was enough to scare him where he was like, you know what, we're never doing this again and we need to make things happen. So doom and gloom is the time to boom. Many economists and media talking heads are pred uh, predicting doom and gloom in the end of the world scenarios uh, with their 24 hour uh, around the clock ranting and raving. So their entire focus is on the problem and who to blame but they don't seem to offer much way of a solution of solving uh, surviving and uh, prospering this is why we don't watch the news like everybody pays attention to the news and frankly it's not a good thing to actually pay attention to and honestly the weather isn't even that reliable I have an app for that now so we don't even watch it for the weather anymore because it is never true well you so. know the reason they put the weather and all that on there is just to draw traffic to their site like they can oh, give a okay. shit. like they don't have to be accurate on the weather oh okay well that is why we'll see now there's not even a reason to watch the weather but the reason we <clears throat> we actually didn't own a TV for five years you didn't own one for longer but we didn't have a TV that entire time and we never watched uh, the news or anything else like that because of the information that was being presented to us every day. It was just problem, 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 blame, blame, blame. And when you're around that and if you hear that consistently, you're all, you're automatically preconditioning yourself to think that way as well. Even if you don't mean to, you might say, no, that's not who I am. That's not how I am. But if you listen to it on a consistent basis, you're eventually going to repeat what you hear. So that's why we don't keep TV. So it's time to learn and use strategies to turn the tide. So new companies, products, and industries are born out of economic challenges. So the person who wakes up every day wanting to be the first in their industry or field uh, who is not victimized by what appears to be reality but who creates a real new reality out of the opportunity in the rubble of the old. By taking the correct actions, you can, yeah, you can come, hold on. You can come back an economic pullback and achieve any level of success that you desire. So the reality is uh, that every business has its ups and downs and every e economy has its cycles. But along the way to creating success, success and security, you have to make some adjustments and accommodate ever-changing market conditions. So it's, it's not possible to be in business and not go through some type of challenge. Eventually, there is going to be a tough point where you're going to be like, what the fuck do I do? And that's at the time where you need to research or ask the questions. This is why also having a mentor who's been in your industry for a long period of time. This is where a mentor comes in handy of being like, okay, this is what we're going through. Like, what do I do? So some sh uh, downturns will be worse than others. Uh, but the good news is uh, twofold. So the first, there are exact and precise actions that you can take to count uh, counter any 
contraction and contractions are excellent opportunities in which to expand and conquer the mark uh, conquer the market so use the doom and gloom to uh, to make your time to boom basically is what he said i thought it was catchy but it didn't come out right but that's all right <laughs> so that is the introduction to this book so it's basically He's saying, he's just like, get yourself into a mindset. Don't rely on others to try to bail you out. You have to figure out the information and figure out how are you going to use what's going on as an opportunity to make yourself into a better place and put your business into a better place. So with that, um, do you have anything that you would like to add? I mean, that's it. it's not a mindset that comes like easy. Like I wasn't. I'm super driven, but I wasn't super competitive, um, if that sounds weird. Like, I unfortunately just didn't give a shit what anybody <laughs> else was doing. So that I had to kind of wake up when I got into direct sales and network marketing and I got inside of a company. Um, I don't remember where I read it or where I heard it, but they're like, look, unless you plan on being in the top 10%, don't bother. Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't remember who said that. And they're like, it's kind of an attitude if you want to make something work. And I realized that had to take place to be in direct sales and network marketing. If you really, really wanted to make it work, you want to be in the top 10%. So I was like, okay, well, how do I do that? Um, and that came down to, you know, looking at kind of what everybody else was doing. Um, I realized what everybody else was doing was, you know, talking with people um, and they were kind of working but most people weren't working. That was the first thing that I realized. I started going around the room and I started asking. I kind of narrowed it down to, okay, what is the skill set needed? And the one thing that I was looking for, the one thing that separated everybody. You know, what is the one thing that separates everybody? And it really boiled down to the ones who were presenting. The ones who could get a presentation in front of somebody, those were the people who were making money. Those were the people who were making things happen. So I started asking people in the room, hey, how many people did you present to? And then um, in the first company I was with, you actually had to track it uh, because there were special meetings that you could go to based on your activity. So I would, you know, look and, and say, well, how many people have you shown it to this month? Oh, okay. And eventually I got into that meeting because you had to present to 15 people a month and you had to have their name and you had to have their phone number and you had to have the time and the place that you actually presented. Um, so I was like, this person's house, this person's, because when I first did it, it was all house to house to house. I got into the room, and here's what I realized. Most of the people were lying, <laughs> you know, because it was really obvious. Because I was like, well, if you're showing it to 20 people and nobody's getting started, either you're really not showing it to 20 people or your presentation sucks. So then I was like, I really need to work on this presentation thing and figure out what makes it work. And a lot of people think you have to be an amazing presenter and you don't have to be an amazing presenter. There's about five things you do need to present uh, in, in a presentation. You need to be clear because um, clarity is everything. If you're not clear on what you're saying, it doesn't matter how excited you are. Um, it doesn't matter how what the numbers are. It doesn't matter what the products are. If you're not clear in what you're conveying, um, you're automatically screwed. Two, you have to be concise. Um, I saw that as a major drawback uh, that a lot of people don't kind of realize when you first start presenting is basically you talk too much. Um, you say way too much. If, you, if you're not clear, that's a problem. But if you are clear but you say too much, that's another problem. Um, third is confidence. Um, confidence comes from doing it over and over again. The, the only way to get confidence is to be bad to get good. Um, that's the only way you're going to get confidence, to know that you know. So by attending open houses, by attending um, presentations of other people and watching other people do it, eventually I was like, oh, okay, I see. This is how you present the idea and the opportunity with confidence. So we've got clear, we've got concise, we've got confidence. The next one is um, consistency. Consistency. Consistency adds a lot. Because one of two things that will happen. You'll either get inspired or pissed off. Yeah. Um, inspiration is everything's working. This is amazing. Um, the opposite uh, is I'm doing all this work and nothing's happening. So now I'm pissed off and I have to make this work. Um, and both of those are driving factors. It just kind of depends on your personality and how you react to them. 
Um, the last is congruency. Congruency is whatever you're asking them to do in the beginning, you're basically finishing with. So my whole presentation to people that I knew was, you know, I need a favor. I want to actually share with you what I'm doing um, outside of my normal, you know, work. So if you do run across the right person, you can refer them to me. And then at the end, I would say, you know, and, and I've heard this many different ways from many different speakers. I would actually thank people. I said, well, thanks for taking some time. Learn about what I do. If you do run into the right person, you can refer them to me. Um, if you do, you know, need to buy this product, you know, I want you to get it through me. And if you ever decide to do something like this, obviously I want to be the person you come to. Um, and that changed everything in my business and presentation. Why? Because it was, it became clear after doing it a bunch of times, it became, I, I got clear, I got clarity. Um, I also, um, was started becoming concise then because I was doing those two things, I got confidence. The consistency, actually consistency should really be first, right? Consistency should really be first because the consistency created the confidence and then the confidence, um, and the congruency that's it kind of all work together in this, you know, recipe to kind of finally it started clicking over. I had to be comfortable with what I was doing. And here's the thing. You have to know where you're going. If you want to lead people, you have to know where you're going. If you want to lead people, if you have no idea where you're going, meaning you don't really know how the comp plan works. You don't really know how to promote. You really don't, you know, you're like, Oh, I don't know any of that. Well, that's part of the reason people won't join you because you don't know. You don't know where you're going. So why would they want to sign up with you if you don't know where you're going, mm -hmm. right? People want to be led in the direction of success. Um, so you can kind of, you know, say, hey, look, I don't know everything. You don't have to know everything. You're like, I don't know everything, but I do know the person who knows where they're going. I would like to introduce you to that person. Um, and that's, that's where third party is so strong. So with that, that is a wrap. What else? Um, if you guys haven't yet, you want to go to the Top Producer Show Facebook page and you want to go join that page and also go subscribe to us on YouTube. Each one of these videos is going to be uploaded to there. So that way, if you guys would like to go back and rewatch some videos, you are more than welcome to. So with that, that is what we have for you guys today. It is Friday already. Dang, this week just went. <laughs> so we will be back with chapter one on Monday and we look forward to seeing you then.